before we get into the football, uh, we just want to say a few things about Chris Wessling, who most of you guys probably know we lost a couple weeks ago. So, Evan, how's it going? How are you holding up? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing okay. Um, we Obviously, we haven't podcasted since the Super Bowl, you and I. So, I just wanted to say something about Chris Wessling because uh, Chris passed away due to cancer uh, after beating it the first time. Uh, and then it, it returned. And you and I spent six years working with Wes at Roto World before he moved on to the uh, NFL. And a lot of people remember Chris as a podcaster because of the success of their around the NFL podcast across the United States and um, especially in the in the UK. Uh, but to me, I will remember Chris Wessling as one of the greatest sports writers, as far as I'm concerned, to ever live. Like he was the embodiment of a sports writer. He was a wordsmith. Uh, he was a guy whose knowledge was encyclopedic. Um, he didn't just love football. He loved all sports. Um, I think that that grew out of, he has like a big family that, with a lot of brothers. He went to this um, pretty famous uh, high school in Cincinnati that uh, produced like Kyle Rudolph. And, um, you know, he just grew up loving sports. Uh, maybe the, the two greatest pieces I think uh, as a sports writer that he ever wrote were these NFL.com long forms about the Bengals um, and the old Houston Oilers uh, his writing was just so multi-dimensional because he could master anything whether it be you know a little roto world blurb or a long form piece covering his, you know specific historical topics whatever he was also the first person that I can ever remember proactively advocating for pro football focus. He was the first guy who showed me the PFF website back in the day. He was like, yo, you, you got to check this out. It was, you know, it was awesome. And he, he actually had his beefs with PFF uh, over the years. You know, he was a, a very old soul and, uh, you know, strong opinion guy. Um, but, you know, that, that just goes to show how, his passion. Um, and I remember the day that Wes told me that he was leaving Roto World and going to, to work for the NFL and, I just, I was so selfish because I was sad and I was mad that he was leaving after Gro Greg Rosenthal had left, but it was the best decision of his life because he went on to meet his wife, Lakeisha in LA. He became an international star because of their reach across seas. Um, and Greg texted me recently and he said that Chris will be a legend forever because of that. Uh, and I mean, he's right. And he, he never would have been that had he stayed at Roto World, which I selfishly wanted him to do. And anyways, I, I got to hang with Chris uh, twice before he passed once in Los Angeles and once on Tybee Island uh, in Georgia. And he was just a, a wonderful human being. I met Lakeisha's wife, a, a great, great loving woman. Um, and about six or seven months ago, they had a baby boy Lincoln. Um, and so if anyone listening to this would be interested in supporting uh, Lakeisha and Lincoln, Chris's family. Uh, there's a GoFundMe set up for those two. Um, and I just, I'm going to miss him so much. And a lot of people are going to miss him. Yeah, really well said. I, I, when I first started, uh, it was, I mean, I know everybody thinks of Roto World now as really big and huge and all encompassing. When I started, it was Evan, it was Wes, and it was Greg. And that was basically uh, it. And I was like, man, this is crazy. And I looked up to Wes so much and I, I one reason I did was because I think he understood that football was cool and everything but it was just a small part of life like he had so many other interests beyond football and especially fantasy football you know he was never as into fantasy as Evan and I were he was more into football the game and I think it's more multifaceted and not as sick as Evan and I are obsessing about players and player values but man when it came to player values I mean everybody respected so much what Chris had to say. And I remember one time I was talking to him about Odell Beckham and I was like, man, I, and I went through all the data about how much of an outlier Odell Beckham is and how it's really hard to pick out outliers. And every time people try to do it, that they end up being wrong. And, and Chris just wrote back. He said, yeah, but I can see it. He's an, he's an outlier. And I was like, okay. And then he went on to be just that as a rookie, obviously. And, and for much of his career before the injuries came for Odell. So, so yeah, man, it's just a really bad gut punch I think um because I you know he was beating it and just for it to come back right after you had his baby is, is really really tough so yeah um the GoFundMe we'll go ahead and retweet it from ETR's uh Twitter as soon as this podcast is over so you guys can find it better if you can spare anything to donate to Lakeisha and Lincoln 